is today's Wednesday. <laughs> I was talking to my coworker and I was like, time is flying. She was like, yeah, before you know it, our lives will be over. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> hold up. I wasn't thinking that far. I mean, I was thinking my more gray hair, but not the tombstones. Anyway, y'all, uh, um, you know what I was thinking about earlier? I was thinking about the people that are, are really good folks, like good people, but they single. Good folks. I'm talking about good quality people. You know, you get some quality things and you like, this is quality. And I'm wondering, like, why are you single? I mean, people be wondering the same thing about me because I can honestly say I'm great quality. I'm wifey material, okay? <laughs> you know, with, with line I was just thinking about, the color purple line, when the lady was like, my pa loved me, he just don't know it yet. I'm like, I'm quality material. My husband just didn't know it. You know, he didn't know it until I was gone. But anyway, no, I be really looking at people and I be like, dang, like, this person is a really genuinely good person. Their spirit is good. Like, I'm like, what is really going on with people not being married or I'm going to use a prime example, my mother. Okay. And I'm not saying this because my mother is my mother, but she has a very good spirit about her. She's, she's just very motherly. She's just very like, she's just, to me, she's a, she's that ideal virtuous woman. And I didn't understand, like, you know, even my husband, when he saw my father's ex-wife and my mother, he was like, what the heck was your dad thinking? You know, a lot of people said that, you know, and not to, not to sit up there and say that, you know, my father's ex-wife, my, my younger siblings, their mother was not in a, she had a league of her own. But I also remember looking at my, um, my younger siblings, their mother, and I, you know, in her youth, in her day, and I would think, like, if she did not meet my father, how her life would have been, because she was a catch back in the day, you know, but there's a difference between, and this is not down putting her, but there's a difference between a pretty woman or a handsome guy when you have everything together, from the charm to the sense of humor to just just you just you just who you are and don't get it twisted you know this is not you know the tree by the fruit that it bears i am not by any means trying to say that um that no it is what it is some people they just you look at them and you just like what was you thinking about marrying this person or what was you thinking of why would you pick this person over that person? Like, why would you pick this woman over your wife and your wife will go to bat for you? Your wife would, would stand for you. Your wife would fight for you. Your, your wife will ride for you. Heck, your wife would, I mean, I, I just, it's the same thing with with the men, it's the same thing with the women out there. Like, why would you choose this man over your husband? Your husband loved you, protect you, honored you. Like, he was just a loving husband. Like, why would you do that? And then I see people who are not married. And, and this is just me on the outside looking in. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you? Because... I don't understand how you can still be a free agent out here if you have all the credentials as a husband, charm, um, looks, um, you work, like what in the world is wrong? And, and I feel like some people do have flaws because I see certain people and I know I'm not supposed to be judging that way, but I see certain people that may have everything, but I see that you lack, you may lack, um, leadership, meaning 
you still follow after your crew, your guys, or, you know, the pack instead of being a loner. You know, those type of people tend to not make decisions for their sales. They make decisions off of what their man say or the advice that their man gives. And because of that, they can't really be on their own two feet when it comes to their own affairs of having a wife and starting a family, having your own tribe because you're too busy being a part of another tribe. And I, and I see that with a lot of guys out here. I really do. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it is, I don't know. And, and even with women too, I, I see a lot of things with women where as though I, I definitely see a lot of great attributes in some of these single women out here. They work. They have their own. They just are looking for a qualified, like a, a really good man. And, you know, I'll tell them in a heartbeat, like, look, now I'll be talking to my friends, like, let me tell you something. Y'all need to look elsewhere. The globe is big. It don't have to be in the United States. It don't have to be. You know, look, look for a man that know how to build a house with his own hands. He know how to build a, you know, roof and doors and stuff like somebody that's good at building, like, you don't got to be around here, you know. If I had to do things differently and if I was back in the dating world, if I was back in the dating world, I had to kind of pause. What would you do, Mona? Hmm, let's see. Because I'm thinking to myself, if I was back in the dating world, that means I have to give up a couple of freedoms. And I, <laughs> and I ain't trying to do that. So uh, let me just stay on the other side of the fence with my binoculars. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. But I, w- I will honestly, my suggestion that I would say to single women is look for a man that know how to build stuff. Like know how to do things with his hands. It's something about a man who knows how to do something. Let me tell you something. I remember I was testing my husband out years ago when we were just dating. I wanted to see if he knew how to put this door up. Because I was like, if he don't know how to do it, I'm kicking him, I'm kicking him to the curb. <laughs> and let me tell you what he did. He brought out the directions and he read it and he actually put that daggone door up. I said, well, well, he has potential. He has potential. You know, I say, like, there are a lot of men out here that work with their hands, y'all. Women, you have a lot of options. And men, too, I don't think men realize how many eligible women there are out here. Like, I don't know what y'all looking at, but there are so many women out here that have never been married. They are eligible maidens. They have never been married. And they have great things about them. I I just be wondering, like, well, what in the world are y'all? What are y'all sip? What are y'all doing here? What are you doing? What are you doing here? I don't know. I think I think people just. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. And so, I know some of y'all single folks get this. Why are you single? You know, but why are you? Why are you single? You know, and, you know, one thing I haven't been doing lately, and I just have to be very honest with y'all. I haven't been wearing my ring. Let me tell you why I haven't been wearing my ring, because, number one, I I don't know. I just haven't been feeling like it. I haven't been feeling convicted if I don't put the ring on without with or without a daggone ring. I know what it is, but. And usually sometimes when I get my nails done, I like I like to put a, you know, nice stone, a nice sparkle. I may put my ring on when my nails is done, but my nails look a hot mess. I'm like, whatever. You know, I'm I'm out. So it I mean, I don't know what it is. I, well, I do know what it is. It's so much confusion going on out here that people don't even know what direction to look in. They don't know when they see quality. You know what I mean? It, you know. They don't know, you know, I, I would have people ask me, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you married? You know, then they realize, I'd be like, that's because I can't get remarried. I have to be single. That's a long story. 
but I'm out of the dating game. I've retired. <laughs> I've retired. <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be looking at the rest of my crew and folks that's eligible. And one thing I am noticing, especially with the young women, is you're in your 20s and your 30s. Well, 20s, 20 and 30s too. I've been noticing like y'all got a lot of children on your hips before you even say I do. That's why it's very important to don't give don't give up no cookies, man. Don't give up no cookies unless you say I do and you walking down the aisle. Y'all got to take it old school. I'm tired of of a lot of these baby mamas out here wanting to be married. Like, I get it. Accidents, well, you know, things happen when you're young. But this is the time right now to start really teaching, you know, the youth right now so they don't have to deal with these headaches of the importance of waiting. Um, but even if so, like, there's still great... There's still great women out there, even if they have children. It doesn't matter because y'all got to remember, um, Jesus, he, he had a stepfather. You know what I mean? And his stepfather, Joseph, was a really good dad. You know, he protected them when he was the baby, when they fled and went to Egypt. Remember, um, he was the first of the stepdads that you really heard in the Bible. So I'm not sitting up here saying that women are out of the game because they have children, um, but it takes a certain type of man that understands the importance of family. And I feel like that a lot of men out here, they have been conditioned to think that they're nothing or they just don't shoot their shots when it comes to the women out here. So they see something and think like, oh, she's never going to give me a chance. But, sh but there are a lot of eligible women out here who is waiting for somebody to pursue them that's you know but if you don't pursue then you're never going to you you know what i'm saying you you need to you need to um especially especially these men out here like if i had a son and even i'll say to my brothers you know i have a younger i have an older brother that's 38 and i got a younger brother that's 25 Number one, tell my brother, you won't have to work, okay? Women like money. You, you, they want to know you able to, to provide, okay, and be a good provider. That's number one. You got to put your child's way, ways behind, and you need to work. Number two, like he already works, but I'm talking full-time, not playing around and playing video games. So women want to know, I, I just feel like this, like, I don't know. I'll be looking at people like, why are you single and why is she single? And then y'all both be looking for love. I don't get it. Like, why, why, why aren't you just, why aren't you guys like connecting? What's going on here? And then I hear from other guys that they're having issues because um, people don't know how to communicate when they meet, when they meet. They don't know how to talk, meaning when they get in front of you, they quiet you. Or I've, I've seen pretty women say the most ugliest things out their mouth and be like, ugh. You know, and, and I, I referenced this movie back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember that movie, Singing in the Rain. But the lady was so gorgeous. She was so, so gorgeous. And they, 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 at, at this time, they didn't have talking pictures. So she would act and just, you know, do all of this. But all of a sudden, talking pictures came out. And when talking pictures came out, then the um, the video industry at that time, they had an issue because of one of their main stars. And at first, you're just like, what's the issue? They wouldn't let her get on the, they wouldn't let her talk on the microphone or nothing. <laughs> and then... When the crowd left or whatever and paparazzi left, she was like, what's the big idea? Why can't I talk? Oh, and I was like, oh, no wonder why they was not trying to let you talk, girl. You sounds a mess. I mean, she was just like, how come 
I mean, she was just real rude, real mean, just obnoxious. And I'm like, oh, this is like letting you know that beauty is only skin deep. Like beauty is in the, the eye of the beholder because she looked so gorgeous, so stunning. But the minute she opened her mouth, it was just irritation and ugliness. And so I realized, too, a lot of women, they have the this look and this appearance like they're gorgeous but the minute they talk it's just like you're not ma'am you're not ladylike at all <laughs> you're not <laughs> like really like and I think a lot of that goes with um the mentality that that they're trying to push on women that they have to be a certain way when I was growing up in my 20s and when we were partying like it was no tomorrow you know little Kim was in our um you know our anthem in our background like yeah you know but at the same time there were other people too that I would I was very persuaded by well that that kind of like you saw him coming and you was going to keep going. Sometimes I don't get it. If you see the accident far away, why would you scoot up? Why would you scoot boots? It doesn't make sense. Beeping the horn while you're moving up. You were supposed to let the man go and beat the horn. <laughs> you know, people are silly. Um, But, oh, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, so, some, so I feel like I mean, it was, so those were the things I wanted when I was growing up, when I was in my 20s. But I also listened to like Josephine Baker and, and I, I listened to um, women that were very like very poised. I know Josephine Baker back in her day, she wouldn't, you know, with the bananas and stuff. But later on, when she started, you know, carrying herself a different way and and I admired other women of great character and reading the Bible and hearing about, you know, a virtuous woman and stuff. It made me want to be a better person, a better woman, you know. And and um, so the thing is, is like nowadays when I nowadays when I see especially women in their 30s, their 20s, I'm noticing like it's this huge thing where it's like this bad girl mentality, I don't care mentality, and um, tat it up. And I get it. Some people say, what's wrong with tattoos? Uh, I, I feel like personally that some tattoos can take away um, feminine when it's too many tattoos on your neck and the side of your face. It, it it doesn't, it doesn't look pretty. And I was talking to my, my sister, you know, I have a younger sister than my brother that's 25. He has a twin and she's 25. And I told her, please do not get any more tattoos because that is not ladylike. But sis, I'm like, I'm trying to tell you. And even my brother said, yeah, I'm not going to lie, Lydia. It's, it's not, uh, it's not feminine. <laughs> and and she was just like, well, you know, and I'm just like, and I had to tell her too, because the way she was talking, she was talking like very, and I said, I'm listening to you, sis, like, I, I'm listening to you, 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 you can, you don't have to um, raise your voice, or I'm, I'm, I hear you, and I want to say, bring out your feminine side, bring out your lady voice, <laughs> you know, bring out your lady voice, because Right now, you sound like you about to play, you about to open up a can of beer and kick it with the boys, you know, and watch, you know, whatever. And yes, um, I'm very feminine. I'm not a feminist. I'm not. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, I go to work because I have to take care of my family, but I am very feminine. But if you looked at these hands, you wouldn't tell. You would think like, girl, you've been working in the fields because I'll be out in that yard trying to get that stuff together, y'all. But anywho, so sometimes when you look at people and you wonder why aren't, why are you single? I sometimes look at people and be like, why you ain't married? And sometimes I be thinking like, man, you, you, you do know you 35, right? You about to be 36, 37. And uh, you still ain't got no kids. 
it. And some people are like, oh, you ain't got to, you know. I'm trying to say, I mean, if you want to be 45 years old with kids, but for women, it's kind of hard, you know, first of all, carrying the pregnancy, it's hard enough in itself. I should know. I should know. Just getting past this first, second, and third trimester is just, it's just an adventure, you know? And it's emotional, too. So, you know, some people, you know, they want to wait. And the next thing you know, before you turn around, you know, you you don't have the husband. You don't have the family. And another thing, too, that I'm really getting tired of, I'm really getting tired of a lot of the men out there who are saying that the reason why women these days that are in their 30s and their 40s is because of the whole feminine movement as if that was the the feminist movement, as if that was the only movement. I mean, we we are seeing a lot of men put on heels these days and lipstick. It is what it is. You're seeing a lot of feminine guys. And I have been meeting a whole bunch of gay men. Just, you know, this guy is, he is drifting. Just, you know, in small talk conversation. And it's always the same you know, I hear I'm they would say that they're gay, but they want to later on get married. They do want to have a wife. They want to have a baby by a woman, you know, and all of this other stuff. So you, you got to put a whole bunch of reasons why people are single out here is because you had folks leave out of the dating pool and look for the same sex versus the opposite sex. Then you had women who, I, I, I don't think they're being taught. I don't think women are, I don't think some of these young and women are being, I don't think they're being taught how to court a woman and how to court a man. I mean, not court a man, but how, how a man should court a woman. And they're not being taught these basic things. Where's my charger? Sorry, y'all. I have to go past the five and below and see. They're not being taught those basic things. You know, they're being taught like, oh, it's, it's what would be what would be. And then it's like, whatever. It's like the, the, the lady's waiting for somebody to say something. And then the guy is like, oh, I don't want to say nothing because I, I was told if I say something, you putting the woman on a pedestal and she not going to want you. So you got to carry her like one of the most craziest things that I've heard on YouTube is the guy who is teaching men how to dog women in order to get them. I was listening. He said, this is going to sound very easy. It, not easy. He said, this is going to sound very evil. The way you get the trust of a woman is it's like a flower. This is how this is what he used. He said, it's like a flower. You get to know them and you deflower her like you just plucking all the petals off. And I was like, oh, my goodness. There are really evil men out here who really want to do that. So then now you're, you're dealing with a whole group of women who have been hurt, okay? And they don't trust nobody. And it's the same thing for men. You're dealing with a whole group of men who have been hurt. I'm talking about hurt to the core and they don't trust nobody. And so it's hard for them to get in a relationship because they've been hurt. So they put up this screen and they're just like, never again am I letting anybody in. And yet you got these narcissistic people out here teaching relationship classes on how to cause destruction on another person's heart. That's why it's very important for the body of Christ to follow and keep the commandments of God. Like we have to love thy neighbor. We have to forgive, right? And when you love, the type of love that we have is, is not hurt, you know? So, but you got these people out here who are teaching folks to cause destruction. 
to cause destruction. And so when I look and see, like, why are you single? Like, how can you be single? And then I guess, like I said, it's, you know, the pickings out here is crazy and nuts. But the quality are still good quality men and women. Like, I know women where I do feel like some can work on themselves, but they've, they've actually put up um, a brick wall. Like, I know some folks that's just like, forget all that dating stuff. I ain't doing all, I'm not, I'm not doing none of it. <laughs> and and it's because they're just like, I've been through it. It's, it's, I'm done. I'm just doing me and living good. Like, they've been through it in their 20s, their 30s. And now it's just like, I will be daggone it. I'm good. I retired from it. You know, I remember after my divorce, my grandmother said to me that she hopes that I get remarried again. And she hopes that I have more children. And I'm like, Nana, you know, she don't, she believe in the whole marriage because her and her husband been together since she was, look at that son. They've been together since she was like in her 20s. My grandmother, my grandmother is 80. You know what I'm saying? They've been together for a very, very long time. And some people believe that you can go out here and get remarried. I already know what happened with it. So I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. So I, that's just my per, my situation, okay? But other people are like, they not even married. They just been hurt. They've been burnt. They didn't give, gave their all to somebody. They took up their life. And they're just like, man, I ain't going back. I'm not going out there. <laughs> people shouldn't feel that way. <laughs> people should feel like I ain't going... <laughs> People should not feel like that. That's like that daggone village in um in Africa. It was supposed to be like an all women's village. And the majority of them women went through the they went through the works because their husbands hurt them. And I'll never forget they asked this lady, she building her little hut. They asked her, would she ever want to get married? married again Shh. this is Africa this lady like <laughs> no she was she like mm -mm, no. no like the way she said it I said man her husband must have did her wrong her, that's why I'm like y'all gotta y'all gotta learn to love your wives man because you hate your wife and despise your wife she she going she putting her running shoes on and she ain't never coming back you got to learn how to love your husband. You hate your husband and despise him. He's sitting on the roof of his house chilling. He ain't coming back in. You know, like, and you got to be very careful who you invite in your life. You got to have quality people, man. You can't be dealing with birds out here. Like I was telling my old co-worker this. And this is what I was telling her. I was like, um, cause she had a really nice friend and I'm like, but she, all of a sudden she had her eyes on this other guy who looked like he just straight out of a dag on music video. And I'm just like, how many kids does this dude have? Three. And I said, I wish you supposed to be baby, baby mother number four. I said, but the other guy, your other friend, he works. Y'all go out. He's very nice and respectable. But you willing to sacrifice that for this dude? No, nah, man. No. I, some people pick and choose what they think is, I don't know. I have no idea. Sometimes I look at people and be like, come again? Like, why are you? Why are you single? What have you been doing with your time? How many women have you been sleeping with, sir? You know what I'm saying? Like, these are, you know, you look at stuff, you be wondering, like, why are you single? 
And some people just want to be single, but I just I just find it very odd. Like everybody, ain't nobody got married. Nobody in the village got married. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say something that I have been seeing where I'm the place where I'm at. I've been seeing a lot of people get knocked up. A lot of people get knocked up and they having babies, but I'm not seeing no weddings. I'm not seeing any weddings. I didn't see any last names change. But I'm seeing babies coming forth. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do y'all think? Y'all having puppies here? But then somebody look at me and be like, how can you talk all of this in your situation? Okay, well, that's my situation. But see, y'all out here playing house. And y'all not even doing it legitly. And it's... Honestly, I feel like, okay, this is the honest truth. Most of the time, when a man doesn't want to marry, it's because he's already looking. He's looking for something better than what he has. When a woman doesn't want to marry, she's looking for something better than what she has. Because when you find something that you are really into and you really love and adore and you can see yourself hunched back over and growing old, you're going to walk down the aisle. But the thing is, is because sorry, thing is, is because a lot of folks these days are trying to they're they're trying to put on this whole front that marriage ain't jack. You don't have to be married. God, let me tell you something. God didn't just do it just for fun and giggles. He didn't just create male and female for fun and, and giggles. He didn't just create you just so you can have somebody right then and there and just get pleasure off. He created male and female for the benefit of us. Because even when he knew we were going to get old, he knew we was going to be old as I'll all get up. And one day, your family that you took care of is going to take care of you. So... All of you guys out there that's having kids is not in your children's life. You better really think because this your children are way better. They're they're way more than insurance. This is our dad looked out for us when we was young. So we look out for him while he's old. I saw one guy, I I um he's on, I know y'all seen him, he's on TikTok. I had to get rid of that account because it's just too much crazy stuff. But he's on TikTok and he always asks his son, where's my, where's my wallet? Where's my car? And he has Alzheimer's. He has dementia. And it's so funny because he'd be like, Dad, you're at my house today. Where's my house? He always asks the same thing. And I said, that was a good man because his sons have all created a room so they can all have time to take care of their father. And that means that you were such a good man that your children are looking for looking out for your well-being. They're looking out for your well-being. My grandmother, I went to go see her this weekend. I did her hair and everything. She wanted her little hair blown out and pressed it and all that other stuff and put it up in ponytail. And I want I make it a point to see my grandmother check on her, make sure that she needs something I'm able to to help out. Because my grandmother looked after me when I was younger. She helped watch over me when I was younger. She helped pick me up from cheerleading when I was a little girl. Like she was always there in my life. So as she is up in age and 80, I am of of course there's no you don't she's not gonna ask me. I'm like, Nana, what you need me to do? No, Nana, I got it. You know, that's that. That's because she, she was so good to me. I got to be there for my grandmother. You know, my mother was so good to me. I got to be there for my mother. And vice versa with my father. So, and before he went on to be with the Lord. So, you got to think like this. You having and being married is just not for that moment. This is for well-being and when you get older. You know, I've heard women say this question. They don't want to be a hospice wife. And I didn't understand. And I'm like, what is this? What is this trending? This is talking about older men that are now ready to settle down and get married. But they only doing it because they just got diagnosed that they got 
cancer or some type of other sickness. But when they were out there humping all of these women, they weren't even caring about their health. But as soon as they're ready to settle down, um, now they can't perform in the bed anymore. And yes, men, you keep humping around with different women. By the time it's time for you to settle down, you're not going to have stigma to do any daggone thing because your body, you've, you've, you've done too much to your body that you don't even have enough time to, to save it for your wife. And then the women have been talking about these men want to get married and all of a sudden, you know, it's so, like one lady was saying her friend got married and literally like five months after the marriage, um, he just got really sick. She was taking care of him and everything. And, when, and he basically passed away. His children treated her like mess. It, it was crazy. But a lot of women have been saying like they don't want to be a hospice wife. So that's why the Bible talks about your wife of your youth, you know, to, to love the wife of your youth. And I'm not saying that in your old age, you can't get married, but it benefits you now to do so. And another thing, too, that's very beneficial. I only got one person on. I only got one person that's chiming in and listening in. But anyway, for the one for the one viewer that's listening in on this, you know, the benefits of a marriage, the benefits of a marriage is that number one, you can vote, you can raise your children in a golly way. Bible, you know, you don't have to depend on the school. You got two parents home to hold it down financially, especially if you both are go-getters and you working, you got more time to play. You got more time to travel. You got, could you imagine? I, I couldn't, you know, if I had, I know when me and my husband back in the day when we were married at the time, um, he got paid, I got paid. We always got paid. Money was just coming in. But God blessed me to be able to um, to hold it down on my own. But I could, if I had, a, if my husband was there and he was working financially, oh, things would get paid off quicker. Vacation time building would be quicker because two can build faster. The Bible talks about that. So the benefits of being married outweighs um, the non-benefits of it. But see, nowadays, a lot of women, and I've heard this so many times, that a lot of the head of the, head of the household nowadays are the women. And a lot of the businesses, um, you know, a lot of women that are in the workforce, they are the women. And so men, I feel like, I feel like you got to, you definitely still have to bring something to the table. At least try. You know, because the Bible says a man don't work, he don't eat. So I, I, I definitely see a reaction, a, a huge um Oh my gosh, I'm driving with no lights on. But it just started to get dark. Mona, but why are you driving with the whatever? But I am seeing a huge benefit of um not benefit. What's the word I want to say, y'all? I am seeing a huge shift where women are running it. They are. And I think a lot of it is dealing with that. Number one, they had no choice but to do it on their own because when they had somebody, the man backed away, something happened. And I'm not saying all men did this, but isn't it very odd how nowadays the head of the household is the woman and children? And nowadays, when you look at the um, when you look at the workforce, there's more women in the workforce. What is that saying? What is that saying? I, I definitely feel like. Um, I, I definitely feel like there has been a huge um, shift, but it's never too late. It's not late at all. Sorry, y'all. I don't know why, but yeah, there are women out here that are still praying for a good godly man. So it, it's not over, but make sure you got your stuff together and vice versa with the women too, you know, vice versa with the women too. I, it, it's it's really sad to see 
But it seems in the United States, there is a huge falling away of families and um, just the tradition of and but I'm also seeing that God is actually um, awakening people of how he wants certain things, not certain things, like keeping his commandments. And I'm I'm hoping to see a restoration of that, a more of a restoring of that, because you're going to start to notice that cookouts not going to be the same. Family gatherings not going to be the same if family is not in as a unit. And a lot of it starts from the household. But in order for two to walk, y'all got to agree. Like, it can't just be the wife that's all for the Lord and the husband just like get that and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible does say if they if they be pleased to stay with you, stay with them anyway. But still, um, that's why I think that it's a lot of singleness that's going on. And it's because people are chasing after the wind. They're chasing after clout. They're chasing after views. They're chasing after likes. And they're not understanding that God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. God wants us to be married, okay? But in order for, and he wants, and, and with that marriage, you have to love your wife, meaning you can't be slapping and hitting her and beating the brakes out of her. And with that marriage, you have to honor your husband. And if he's if if y'all separated because of one of those things, you still have to listen to God and remain unmarried unless you reconcile and learn how to forgive. Pass your pass that test of forgiveness, repentance and forgiveness, and and applying love into your life. You, and then it just it goes with the harmony of the way God created us. You know, of course we're gonna deal with you know, certain issues that arise. But when you come in your home of peace, love, and for forgiveness, and you learn how to do that, because eventually, you know, you started off in your 20s, arguing back and forth, 30s, you just, you know, may not arguing too much. 40s, you kind of like on a chill. 50s, you really on a chill. 60s, 70s, you get old and you realize, like, I'm good, you know, we're good. But some of y'all gave up so Y'all gave up so soon, you weren't even able to get to those levels to realize that it got better if you only forgave. You know what I mean? So I think the reason why people are... So to, to sum it all up, to sum it all up, to sum this all up, I'm going to have a minute. Well, you got all types of stuff in this car. Hope this don't fall over the place. Sorry, y'all. To sum it all up, I really believe that the reason why people are not married is because they are looking for something better. They're looking for somebody, they're looking for something better, their image of perfection. And then some folks, I have heard this too. I've heard, I have heard folks um, look at their friend situation and realize that um, the friends went through so much and divorce and it just completely turned them off from being married see that's why married folk y'all gonna be held accountable because could you imagine when god show you the, the reason what you've done to each other your unforgiveness other folks strayed away from being married because they saw what you went through that's why married folks is supposed to be a model and i'm and i'm talking about real married people i'm not talking about Adultery folks that's talking about, yeah, we we in love, we won. No, you're not. I'm talking about real married people that actually can say in our marriage, because you know, I've heard testimonies of folks break up and then they got right back together. Now, I'm like tired. Should I go to this too? Should I go to this? 
I go to the gym today? I'm like really tired right now. The time is 7.37. I want to say yes, mommy. You need to go to that gym. Eight, nine, ten, seven. I only got like three hours of a workout. I only got three hours of a workout. But I need one. I feel I feel like a I feel like a mule kicked me in the back of my neck. Pow! Like I really feel like <laughs> a mule. And honestly, too. Mama, do you want, I could go jog. I can't go jogging. It's too late. I need to work out, man. I miss working out. All right, I'm going to go work out. I'm going to go work out, but I got to go get me some dag on here. Y'all cannot find my dag on earbuds. Um, and I just misplaced them. I was doing the yard, and I was at first I was going to put two of them on. Then I was like, no, nah, Mona, you don't need to put two. Reason why, because you need to make sure if you hear anything, you can, you know, act quick, you know? But anyway, that's... um So... I believe that's the reason why folks ain't married. Folks ain't married because marriage to them is not important, not even realizing it's been it's so healthy and it's beneficial. It's healthy and beneficial. It is. It is not. It, it, if you have a good marriage, it is healthy and it's beneficial. It is. When you get old, you got your husband, you got your wife. When you you got your children, you know, I'm trying to tell you, your man's and them is not going to be there for you. The women, your friends and stuff, it's going to get to the point where they're not going to be going out like that. They got things to do. They just want to relax. You're not going to be putting on or whatever like that. Like at the end of the day, your family is going to be the most important thing. And it's a sad case when folks, you look at them, they don't have no family. You don't got nobody. You don't got nobody. You don't have no family. And, you know, you you don't have anybody? Where are your children at? Well, I know of them. That's just like um my mother's father, her biological father. He was never in my mother's life. So I ended up finding him years ago on the website and I called him and he picked up and I said, I think you're my grandfather. And he said, I only had one daughter. And I said, what was her name? And he named my mother's name. And I said, that's my mother. So I gave my mother the information. She fly, she flew out to go see him. But because he wasn't the ideal person to her, or what she made up in the head, she looked at him and said, I don't think you my father. And she walked away. And it wasn't and, and when she told me, I don't think that's my father, I was like kind of like, really? And I didn't say anything about it. And then years went by. Years went by. And I was like, I asked mother, and my grandmother was like, I was young, and that was the only person I was with, and yes, that's her father. So I said, I asked my mother, Nan, mommy, why did you tell him that when your own aunt told you she knew who your father was, and if your aunt was older than you back in the day and vouched that that was your father, why would you say that that's not your father? Well, that's because he was much darker. I said, Nana's very light and fair skin. She's lighter than you. His hair is very fine. Your hair is fine. Oh, I said, Mommy, you sat up there and you ruined just my chance to even get to know the man. And he's probably dead and gone because of this is what you were thinking. Well, I believe that something happened that they fled. You believe nothing. Your own grandmother, your own mother told you who your father was. He knew he was your father, and the daggone aunt knew that that was your father, which is your mother's sister. And matter of fact, I remember my grandmother saying, I remember my grandmother saying he showed up at the door with some milk for for my my mother when she was a baby. My 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 grandmother had my mother when she was 14. Okay, just to let y'all know. 
So I got a young grandmother. When people look at my grandmother, they they think that's my mother. But anywho, so so I was telling this to my mother, and see, she was just like, "Well, I did tell the church." I'm like, "Well, ma," like, and she was like, "Well, I'm like, sometimes you." Just, I'm like, it just messed up the whole thing, man, just because of what you perceived in your mind. And that wasn't the reality. But I guess my mother felt like her dad was never there, so she didn't have a relationship with him. So he died alone. I mean, he had, I'm sure he had, um, you know, his 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 brother and stuff like that, but he, he died with, with, no children or nobody coming to visit him. I was excited when I when I spoke to him, and he was excited too. But my mother was just like, "This can't be my father. This is not who I imagined." So that's why you got to be in your children's life, because with so man, whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. God created us in a way that we are supposed to be. What are we supposed to do? Be fruitful and multiply. Bill Gates says too many people, so Bill Gates need to be the first to jump off a cliff, okay? Because God says, be fruitful and multiply. And please forgive me, that was the wrong example to use. But I'm just saying, if you think it's too much room, then make room for everybody else that want to live, you know? But when when I look at Japan, man, it's so bad over there. Them people over there are so-called marrying their dolls and things, you know what I'm saying? It's so wicked out here. Like, people are doing just crazy stuff. Women are actually throwing weddings because they feel like they're never going to be able to be married. They're in their 30s, so they're actually throwing wedding parties just so they can put on a dress in Japan. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And all these men over here looking for eligible women and the governments and what they've done, the one-child rule now. In China, they're just like, you know what, forget it. I ain't having no kids. Because too much pressure. First you say I have too much kids. Then you say I need to have kids. Now you're trying to force people to have kids. Now you were trying to tax people. to that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm going to tell you something about this government too. They're no, you know, you think if a woman had 15 kids. I'll never forget one lady had, I think she had 11, 12 kids. And she was like, somebody need to help me. And I'll never forget one man was making fun of her because... He was like, you had all them kids. What you mean somebody need to help you? But I want you to look at this. Look at it like this. A woman has 15 kids. First of all, with a father at, okay? But anyway, I digress. A woman has 15 kids. Those 15 kids are only kids for a little while. Those 15 individuals are going to become adults. And when those 15 adults start making some money, Uncle Sam will be the first in line to take that money and be like, mm, thanks for the taxes. Thanks for the grocery taxes, the gas taxes, the house taxes, the rent taxes. Thanks for the taxes of everything. The Uncle Sam is going to tax those 15 kids when they become adults until the day they die. So at the beginning, at the beginning of what I'm trying to say is that, yes, Uncle Sam do need the help. You know, she needed help at that time. They only kids for so long, but after that, it's tax time. That's the way the government looks at it. But if we really want to go with what's right is to wait until you get married. A lot of people are not trying to hear that. Wait until you get married. Wait until you get married. A lot of the men out here, they still like to chase after somebody and work for their hand in marriage. Some of them don't know how, and if they find something that they really like and they have to really put in work for it, they are willing to wait. So wait until you get married. That way, when you get married and you have children, it's not out of wedlock. And I know some of y'all like, well, there's a lot of people that have gone in and they've been went to the divorce courts and stuff like that. I get it. You know, you, you just never know. You just never know. Some people be like, well, you got to pick and choose wisely. There's a lot of people that's heading to the d- divorce court. And that's because society is saying if you don't feel like you don't have to, although God says to remain unmarried or reconciled and don't don't put your wife or your husband away. You know, people 
of just saying what the heck with it and they're doing that and this is the reason why you got so many single people out here because number one they're saying what other people are doing number two they've been hurt number three they they're waiting for the perfect person so they're stringing the one they have along number four they're not they're not seeing eligible people in their space in their in their in their they're not seeing eligible eligible people and I guess it's hard for you to see eligible people if you go home. Like, how the heck are you supposed to meet somebody new if you're going in the house? Pick places to go, I suppose. I don't know. Bowling or, I don't know, in the park. Pray and ask God fast. I'm sure there's a there's a man out there that's looking for a wife. And I'm sure there's a woman out there that would like to have a husband. So pray that you'll meet, but I, I will honestly say the elders out here, you need to start teaching people the correct way of courting somebody. See, back in my day, it used to be, how you doing? Can I get your number? I would like to take have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. But nowadays, people are nuts. People are nuts. It's really hard, man. You want to have to really fast and pray for real. Fast and pray. But your mind, your mind got to be like together before you can even think about having a relationship with somebody. Y'all, I'm so tired. I should have been at this gym at 7, not 7.48. I almost don't want to go, but I need to because I need, I need to work out. I got to ask myself, Mona, what did you eat today? I need to get some earplugs too. It don't make no sense to sit there going to the gym with no earplugs. I just want to go in the house and just sleep. I think I may just go in the house and just sleep. Tomorrow's Thursday, but tomorrow morning, you're not going to have. Just go, just go today, Mona. Just go today. Sorry, y'all. You know it. I'm tired. Look, I'm already here, so I'm thinking to myself, you should go home and just relax. You can always go to the gym. No, I need to I need to burn some of this belly fat off from sitting down all day on day eating snacks. Yeah. But yeah, so that, you know, that's, you know. <laughs> That's the reason why folks single out here. And then, like I said, some of y'all eligible. Some of y'all not crazy, though. Some of y'all real eligible, good folks. But I think that the people that come around you may not think that they can deal with you. You know, they may think, like, you're, you're out of their reach or whatever like that. And, I mean, that comes with confidence now. That comes with confidence and I should go in there and see what's going on. I don't think I've ever been in there. I don't think I'm gonna do a, a workout day to day. I just, I just feel so. I just feel so tired. Could it be that you stayed up at freaking ten o'clock working from home, Ramona? Well, it could be that, I suppose. <laughs> Hey, but I know everybody in there getting it in the gym. They trying to get ready for the summertime. Man, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to get in there and work out. Go jogging. Do a couple of things. So I can at least say I did it. I got to keep up. All right, so that's all I have to say about that. That's the reason why people is single, y'all. That At least that's my observation. And what did I say? Number one, look at the surroundings. Number two, because when you see everybody else getting a divorce, you just be like, the heck with it. Number two, somebody didn't hurt them. They didn't hurt them so much so that they're just like, <laughs> please. I just saw what I saw what Latasha went through. Did you see what her husband did to her? Please, I ain't going through them things. Or because 
somebody may think that you are too out of their you're out of their league. And again, that goes with confidence. I need to do, you know what I need to do? I need to do uh I need to do a dating series. Matchmaking kind of kind of thing. Like you can't be crazy and nuts out here. You gotta know how to eat with a fork. You know what I mean? You gotta know how to use the plate. Get your elbows off the table. Don't bring up conversations like that, you know? Sometimes it's good to have really good, nice conversations. You know, some people be like, if you don't know what to say, just stick to the weather. It's nice weather today, isn't it? You know? Like some people just don't know what to say. Some people text all the day on time that when they get in front of somebody, they just don't know what to say. They they don't know what to say. They're always on their phone. You know? And I will honestly say that before me and my husband went to the divorce court, I noticed we were just both on our electronics more. And that's when everything was ju just kind of like rolling out nowadays that's all y'all do that's all y'all do y'all just on yourself and y'all don't even conversate y'all don't even look each other in, in the face like they need to take things back in the day when people used to write a letter to somebody and they are handwriting so that person i guess that's a, another form of text messages but text messages could be taken in a very different way like it was always very intimate when somebody wrote you a very nice note like even cards you know what i'm saying but why are you single some of y'all be like i just i've been hurt i've been hurt and some of y'all really don't want to be in relationships you just want to sleep around just want to be whores and you don't care that you're going to hell and burning you know you just with, with gasoline draws on you just you know you just don't want to settle down because you always on the hunt looking for the next best thing. Ruining hearts on the way. God is going to hold you accountable. Trust me, there's been a lot of good looking men dead in the casket. Don't look too good then. You know, and women too. We had it going on and, you know, I saw this one thing when this girl, she was one of them little belly dancers. She was very young. I wouldn't say she was a belly dancer, but she had like, I think the article said she had like maybe 600,000 followers and she would do this belly stuff or whatever. And young, only 22 years old, dead. And I'm not saying that things would have been different if she was married. However, look how you lived your life. You know, right now when you, when you think that you have so much time in the world, you think like, I'm just going to do me and sow my, sow my royal oaks, you know. But remember how important family is, how important a husband and a wife is. While we are here, we are here for a mission, okay? And we can do the things that we love and glorify God in it while having healthy families, bringing up healthy children, husband, wife. And in order for you to be even get to that level, you got to be able to date and meet somebody, right? on that level and you got to pick and choose the certain things that you, you can't be running through everything i think i may go home i'm not i'm tired i think i may go home i don't think i don't think i want i think i'm gonna go home i can't do this tonight i'm just tired i'm just gonna lay down Because if I if I go in this gym and I work out this time and that time, all right. Let me see what they got five and five and below. If they got some new um, because Lord knows I don't want to have to go online and order these headphones. But I do. You know how you just feel like you're tired. Like I just need to go home or just get in the bed. Yeah, I just decided not even to bring my laptop. I just left my laptop and I just left all the stuff and I was just like, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing no more work. You know why? Because I already gave all y'all the, the, the juice at work. It's time for me to go home. Man. 
I used to say back in the day, I wish I had a rich husband. I know you say that's what I used to say back in the day. Why would you say that? Because I wouldn't have to work these long hours. Somebody, somebody, when you can have a rich and selfish husband, don't nobody want a rich, selfish husband. But you know, I think about you know those women who be marrying those guys that like bread and money, like that one lady. She live in a daggone palace, and her husband's so daggone rich. He gonna, he gonna try to. It's not even funny, but I couldn't imagine that because I could never. He he didn't try to sell one of her kids off to marry into somebody else's family. That's a nightmare. Not no money can make you happy like that. Mother sitting up there fighting to make sure that her daughters and and sons get the life that they live. So marrying somebody rich ain't gonna whatever. But if you had the riches. It's a different story. You can run things the way you want to run things. Some people get rich and then they be like, clean up. You got to do what the other person tell you to do. That's another thing too. People, honestly, I can't, I used to, I used to be like this in the real world, in a godly, biblical, what's mine is yours. You don't have to worry. But nowadays you I've seen the worst in marriage. Trust me, I've been through it. I've been through the worst of a divorce. When somebody trying to take everything from you, including the baby. I've been through it when they going through accounts and subpoenaing you and stuff. It, back in the day, like when they were subpoenaing they were subpoenaing, subpoena, I don't even know how to say it, subpoena my account. I'm like, for what? It's only like 50 bones in there, 50 dollars in there. But since you want to subpoena me, I subpoenaed his account. I subpoenaed his documents as well. Playing that tip for tat stuff. It's just some people don't want to go through that headache because when you build together, clack, 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 it takes so much to tear it down. And then you in court and you just throwing blows at one another. Like, he's this, she's this, he's this, she's that. I remember when my husband was on. <laughs> it's not funny. I remember when, I, I'm not going to the gym tonight, y'all, I just can't. I'm going to try to go tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday. I'm going to try to go tomorrow and try to hit it up on Saturday, but I can't do it tonight. But, and if that's the case, then I don't need to go ahead. I'm not ordering, I'm not getting those things, Eve. I'm going home. I'm going home. I, I'm just not feeling it tonight. I want to go home to relax. I almost want to get me some oranges. Well, I am in five and below. I'm at least going to see what's going on up in there. Let me stop. Let me just chill. No, nah, but when I was in court, I remember... I remember when my husband was talking, I kind of blanked out and kind of went in la-la land. And he was accusing me of stuff, and I didn't say anything. I was, <laughs> I kind of blanked out and went into La La Land. I mean, I could laugh at it now because I was supposed to be like, object, Your Honor, or, you know, I was supposed to kind of, and the judge said, You did this at his job. I said, Your Honor, no, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't do none of those things that he said. I was like, Your Honor. And then I realized I was supposed to be like objection, Your Honor. Objection and overruled. I didn't I didn't even know if the judge was saying I look, I needed to know the terms. I didn't even know if the judge was saying in my favor or not. I just blanked out for a minute. I blanked out. And when you when you're in court, the other party puts you down to try to it doesn't matter who's right. It's all who wins, you know, because I remember I remember when my husband at the time was trying to talk about how abusive 
I am and and I can smile at it now because none of this stuff was true. See, he was like, oh, she's abusive with this, that, and the third. So I was representing myself. So I got up there and I asked him, how tall are you? <laughs> and he was, you know, he gave her his height almost six feet tall. And then I said, um, don't you have certificates in um, Taekwondo? You know, black belts and brown belts. <laughs> and I remember his, I remember his uh, lawyers was like, I object. And the, the judge was like, nope, I'll, I'll let it stand. Because you're not going to sit up here and be talking like, like I could just walk up in the room and chop you down when, when you know daggone well that's not the case. I remember one time he he was trying to show me this move and I he, he like did some type of split in the air and I was like whoa 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 babe hold on now you about to kick me to the daggone moon somewhere so you know that was a daggone lie so I had to bring up them belts I was like don't you get like a a brown or black belt <laughs> it's I mean I can look at certain things now. And I can laugh at it, but in the the honest truth is that court will have you going blow to blow with somebody. And a lot of folks, when they see what other people have gone through, they are just completely turned off because they look at the statistics and they think like, that's going to happen to me. So that's why these people, so you have a group of people, why are they single? These people were hurt. They witnessed some things. Um they're sitting up here dating the same sex they're he's just on a hunt to just see how many women he can lay with so he doesn't you know and then and then those women who were thinking that they were going to be the next one to be the missus you know then you have to look at the multiple marriages that these people are in and it all goes back to this it goes back to you're not loving your wife, you're not honoring your husband, and you're not living in a biblical way. You're not living the standard of God. If everybody lived to the standard of God, let's just be very honest. If everybody stopped right now and reverted back to the word of God and was living, living in the word of God, they would have healthier families. Healthier families, traditional families. Now what is this dude looking like? This dude look like he over there kicking this woman's behind. Does she look like she's walking up on? But that's the reason why people are single out here, I suppose. You even look at these so-called celebrities and look at the issues they're dealing with. People have literally just became, um, a, they just... Sorry, y'all, some crazy stuff going on. Oh, those her babies. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? They over there beating each other up. You looking like, what is this guy beating this, this lady up? But then they come around, they brothers and sisters <laughs> playing games. But yeah, that's the reason why so many people are single, and it's sad because if you don't if you don't turn around your ways now, you're gonna be old. 
You gonna be an old maiden. Some of y'all be like, so what? Eating chips? I don't care. You're gonna look and you're gonna be you are not you you're not gonna be able your eggs gonna be dried up. You're not gonna be able to have children. And some of y'all are like, so what? But it's a wonderful thing to be loved. Like, I don't want to discourage anybody. It is a wonderful thing to be loved. Like, remember that time when you first met somebody and you was just in love? Like, your heart just skipped a beat. Like, you was just, this person was just like, you were just in love, you know? And you were just ready to walk the ends of the earth, you know? You were just ready to... Just the experience being in love is just a wonderful thing. And that experience is only supposed to be given to the right person. You know, that one person. So everybody can can feel that. Some of y'all, you had that, that, that natural high of meeting somebody new. That you want to meet somebody new over and over and over and over again. You selfish. You won't give somebody else a chance to do it. Instead, you this is your umpteenth boyfriend i mean dag some of y'all in the hundreds for real for real you got more miles than a dag on peter belt you know cross country peter belt you're like you just you don't even care you just in it for the you in it for the thrill like a roller coaster like that you want that same feeling of walking down the aisle so people can be like look at the bride for her 20th time it's in it, Again, why aren't you married? And some, some, the women I know, they just said they haven't met Mr. Right yet. You'd be like, what the heck? What are y'all doing out here? Is anybody going to invite me to the wedding? Anybody? Can I? I remember my sister was, was about to marry somebody. I said, absolutely not. He has a living wife, and they got like five kids together. I'm sorry, but that ain't the one for you. He need to go back to his wife. And I remember she was mad. She was like, you B. I was like, y'all know my stance on this, okay? Don't be coming around me if you're sleeping with other people's husbands. Because I'm not going to no adultery wedding. Now, if it's a real legit wedding, please, by all means, tell me. I'll make sure to bring the fine wine. Heck, I'll even bring the crystals. I'll even help decorate. I want to witness this beautiful thing. But don't invite me to no secondhand stuff. I came here to witness. I didn't come here to witness people committing adultery. Talking about this her second husband. What, 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 what am I, the second witnesses? Like, to know he's committing... That she's committing adultery? No. And some of y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all be like, Mona, shut up when it comes to that. Goodness, what's wrong with being in the second marriage? You want to know what's wrong with it? It's called adultery. It's called adultery, ma'am. That ain't your husband. That ain't your husband. That ain't your wife, sir. That's somebody else's. You got somebody out here that's been waiting for you to see them. But you've been sitting up here fiddling with somebody else's stuff. Uh, I see everybody with these daggone Teslas. They're true. They starting to look like little Toyotas to me. All right, let me get on home. Let me go up in here to five and below, y'all. I'll talk to y'all.